Uh, welcome to the green room here at Main Search. We appreciate you all coming out today. And we're very fortunate to have, who lives here in Nashville, Steve Morrow. He's not just a guy who works on Monroe. He's a, he is, a, we're fortunate to have him as our sales rep. And he does a great job for us. And uh, he really knows his plants, and you're about to find that all out. So without further ado, Steve Morrow. All right, like you said, I'm Steve Morrow. Everything you said was way too kind, but we'll take it for today. Um, I worked for Monrovia. This is about my sixth year with Monrovia. I've worked everything from, I did an internship there where I worked out in the field from everything from seeding all the way up to full grown trees. I've done everything from spacing, pruning, loading trucks. So, kind of got the business side down, and uh, it is amazing. You guys have, I mean, unless you looked at a wholesale nursery, I never thought there was so much work that went into plants, so um, it's almost scary. But uh, so, kind of on um, what I wanted to give you is just a little, a little heads up on what Monrovia is and um, what we do. Monrovia is a wholesale nursery um, that sells independent garden centers around the United States. Uh, we do sell into Canada. We have sold plants to Japan, and re most recently had um, a few loads go to Dubai when they were doing their big explosion over there of uh, real estate. Uh, we have four nursery locations, Georgia, North Carolina, and our biggest are Oregon and California. Um, I'd say it's somewhere around 4,000 acres, maybe a little bit more, of um, plant, um, or land that we grow plants on. Uh, we're the largest container-grown nursery in the United States. Every single one of our plants is grown in a container. None of our plants are um, in uh, a field. We find that we can grow a healthier plant, control the environment of the plant from basically start to finish. Uh, that one little picture, as you can see, uh, you can see little cars down there. That's pretty big, but that's only about one hundredth of the nursery up in Oregon. Where is it located in Oregon? Dayton, Oregon, closest big city, Salem. So 30 minutes, 40 minutes from Portland. Um, that is our garden, and you will have Shasta daisies that are four to five feet tall there. I mean, it is. It is like Jurassic Park out there with plants. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, you can kind of see uh, a little bit of soil over there on the top left, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that too. It, can people, like public people, go in? Every once in a while they'll allow it, usually if it's a gardening group or something like that that's okay. organized. Um, it takes a little bit of planning, but you are you are able to get in there sometimes. Uh, Monrovia won the Evergreen Award. Uh, basically, that's because of our waste prevention, our recycling, um, the, what what we actually purchase and reuse. And um, Oregon was one of the facilities that won that. That's kind of a really hard award uh, to win, but we were very fortunate to do it with uh, all the practices we did. Um, when I was talking about that soil that was on the docks, what we do is when we plant throughout that years, I mean, some of these plants take we have plants on site that take 10 years to grow. Um, you have to prune them a lot. Uh, Monrovia prunes and prunes and prunes because that's that's how we're able to get plants as bushy as that, that um, feeling blue cedar. And it's not just one branch sticking out of the pot. We prune it and prune it and it's gonna get bushier and bushier and become a more full, more healthy plant. Um, all those cuttings need to go somewhere. We actually recycle them and use it in our soil. So we, we, we reuse as much as possible. Um, there it says we annually have 15,000 cubic yards of green waste that we use right into our compost. Um, we have 40 different soils. We grow, I think it's 25, well it says, now it's about 25 probably, uh, cultivars after this year's new introductions, um, of different plants. We can't use the same soil for everything. Um, we grow some plants in Oregon where we have to make sure the soil actually drains because it rains year-round, as you guys can imagine yeah, up there. Separate. And then we grow in California where it doesn't rain at all, so we need soil that retains water. So um, we have to almost pick the soil for each plant. Um, as you can see, we have succulents, we have conifers, we have grasses. They all need something different. They all have their own needs. Um, so those, uh, with the cuttings and all that, we use that in our soil recipes, and then we mix in what we kind of need to do to make it perfect for the plant. Monrovia was one of the companies that started uh, using mycorrhizae. Does, has anyone heard of mycorrhizae before? It's, it's a fungus that's naturally occurring in the soil. Problem is, every time you build a house, people will rip off the topsoil, and you're stuck with the lower soil levels that don't have it. Um, 
we put it in our soil and what happens is it's it's part it's an organism that actually goes out and brings nutrients back to the plant so we'll come back um, monrovia grows everything there conifers deciduous evergreen grasses perennials tropicals trees um, roses vines cactus and succulents are one of the things we're bumping up um, even if people want to put them indoors that's fine but we have some really cool ones we're going to be talking about in a little bit uh, a lot more edibles United States wants edibles. They want blueberries, everything from apples. They, they want to be growing their foods again. Um, and then we do a lot of topiaries, which that's about the only thing I didn't bring in here. Um, Monrovia has been known for their, their spirals. They look like they come out of a soft serve ice cream machine. And they're all hand cut. They're all pruned by someone in the field. And it's not just like they wait till right before they go into the truck to prune them. We prune them over here so it's they're always really thick and really full. Um, we're fortunate enough to have a man named Nicholas Satin work for us. He's, he's kind of like our Indiana Jones. He goes out in the world and finds plants for us and brings them back. Um, we test them. We grow them in the United States in different, uh, different cities around, and we find out if they're going to work here. These plants can be found in the independent garden centers. Yes, you'll pay a little bit more for them, but you'll be a lot more successful in your garden. This has been a plant savvy tip from Nicholas Satin. <laughs> Basically, this is how we pick plants. Uh, better bloom. The disease resistance is a huge thing. We'll trial plants, like I said, in all different cities. We'll trial them on top of, even in California, we'll grow them um, on our nursery. We'll grow them on top of a, the biggest hill we have in the, in the valley. We would have said mountain, but there's really no mountains where we're at. Um, too close. Uh, drought tolerance, cold tolerance. It's a huge thing. We're, we're right at a zone six, seven, you know. If, um, if we can get a plant that's a little more hardy, it can live here. Plants that we didn't know could live here. And I have a few examples of plants that are right on the cusp but that have been proven over the last three years um, to live. And we've had some really, really rough winters. So uh, dwarf and compact habit. Um, Monrovia grows a lot of plants. Most of our plants are ones that you can put in your yard. People don't have these huge estates. You know, people have homes with a front yard, a backyard, and they need plants that don't grow 60, 80 feet tall anymore. Um, Indian hawthorns. Indian hawthorns um, are a borderline plant for us, but uh, the snow cap and it's been one that we've been able to overwinter the last three years in the landscape. Uh, snow cap is going to be this one. I don't know that's, this is actually Southern Moon up there, but this is snow cap first. Nice mounding shrub. Uh, in the winter, it gets this purplish red leaf all over it, kind of similar to maybe that. Uh, and as you can see, it's got these buds right now that are going to kick in. It's just going to be covered in white flowers. Um, it's unique. A lot, of, a lot of people don't actually have these in the landscape right now. It's a very, 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 very pretty plant too. Um, the newer variety, which is a cross between this and one that's called an Umbelata Minor that is more of an upright grower, Get a little bit tighter on the leaves and a little more upright. Um, same cold hardiness, same winter color, and same white flowers. It's just a little more upright, and the, the leaves are a little bit closer together. How big does it get? Three to four feet on about both of them. Um, th this one will just mound out. The snow cap will just mound out. This one will get a little bit taller. Jade butterfly ginkgo. Um, have you guys seen ginkgo trees in the landscape? No, they get. 60 feet tall, 40, 60 feet tall. They're huge. Um, this is one that's a dwarf. Uh, it's this sticky looking guy right here. It looks like a walking stick. This guy, um, he hasn't leafed out yet, um, just like the other ginkgos have not. This one will stay very, 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 very small. Um, you could put it in your backyard. You could put it even right next to your front door. It's not going to overtake your house. Um, 15 feet tall max, 10 feet wide. So, for those who like ginkgos, you can plant that. Ginkgo biloba was one of the only plants that actually, to kind of show you how hardy it is, in, um, in Japan, it was one of the only ones that radiation didn't kill. Uh, these are exciting. Does anyone know about etopeonies? Please tell me something. And I, I just bought one. I don't know that much about it. I just bought tell it. us about it, and I will give you 
I will t tell me what you know about it first, and I'll give you one of these. This, this is a Monrovia catalog. It's got info on all of our plants, pictures oh. with all of them, so you can add that to your little library. But oh, tell, tell us what you kind of know about these well, and I'll fill in what you don't. Okay, you I can't just cheat. Don't cheat. Well, no, I just I just bought it. About <laughs> you just bought three it today. Weeks? Yeah. Uh, three weeks ago. Here. Um, an Ito peony is it's not an herbaceous peony. It's not going to be the, the littler ones, and it's not a tree peony. These two plants, right to my left, are Ito peonies. As you can see, they grow up from a stump kind of down there. Um, at the end of the year, what you do is you actually will just cut them back. They'll just die. Um, but the amazing thing is they're, they're hybridized between the two of them. So you get stronger stems and then you get big, huge flowers. The flowers we used to have different tags, I thought. Um, the flowers are about this big. Um, the cool thing about it is, like it says, um, the guy, the Ito was his last name. He started crossing them. It took him a very long time to actually cross them, and then it took him a longer time to actually get them to flower. They used to sell for $500 to $1,000 for a one gallon. The cool thing is you're also going to get yellows, which um, are kind of a harder peony to find. Uh, this one, I'm going to show you kind of some of the cool cool flowers that they actually come with. So we have plenty of yellows. You need to get white ones with the marmalade in them, pink ones. This is a, a copper kettle if it will come up fast enough for us. Well, it's the same size. How soon will they bloom? Yeah, they bud. have bud. they have buds on them now. Yeah, this one has a bud on it right now. And it will be covered. I mean, it will be literally covered with buds. And the flowers are no joke that big. This plant is a bulletproof plant. We grow it down in Georgia at our nursery right on the parking lot. Um, and if you guys know south of Georgia, it's not the friendliest, friendliest place for plants. It is hot, humid, and this is right next to a blacktop. Um, and this thing, it's a variegated pyracantha. Now, most people think pyracantha, big, big old thorns, not friendly. I don't want it. This, is, this does have thorns. They're in there. But it's a variegated, it's green, white right now. In the fall, it turns bright pink. It does flower and it does get a little bit of berries. Um, it gets three by three. If you have any place where plants haven't been able to work near a road or anything, this thing will live there. Um, it's probably my favorite pyrocantha right now. Um, it's gorgeous and like you can see, the fall coloring is amazing. Silver lining. Silver lining. So for those of you that want to try edibles, here are four great selections. This has been another Plant Savvy Tip from Nicholas Stadden at Monrovia. Everything from fruit trees, apples, cherries, apricots, pears, um, to figs. Like, this is one of them that uh, Nicholas was talking about. This one's just starting to leaf out. His was obviously a little bit ahead. This is a Kodota fig, right? Um, that's an edible there. Um, will live just fine here. Uh, we have a couple of tropicals. You can get these in trees or shrubs. Just move them inside in the winter and uh, you can have your citrus live there. We have lavender and rosemaries. Um, if you guys cook rosemaries, cut them straight off this. These, these are kind of a fun gift or if you just want to sit them out on your own patio. Uh, leave them just like that, or leave them just like that. They already have their container. We grow them with a little bit of moss on the side as a decorative. Um, these are raspberries. I believe I have raspberries and grapes here. Um, we do raspberries, grapes, a ton of varieties. We even have yellow raspberries, blackberries. Um, any of them are gonna do just, just fine here. Okay, with our blueberries, they're all self-pollinated. Okay. Um, it's one of the things that we, we select for. Now, if you want a better tasting or a more um, fruiting one, it's, it's always a good idea to select another variety just so they can cross pollinate. I mean, one blueberry is never enough anyway. I'm, but I'm a blueberry guy. I, I love them. And I don't think, uh, if you only have to pick, if you say I want to pick one edible element to add to my landscape, blueberries are the absolute no-brainer. So. Uh, they really are they're easy to grow and they make a uh, they have great ornamental value uh, they make a nice looking hedge if you had something where you were you previously had maybe dwarf Burford holly or something like that 
yank those out and use those in the place of them and no one will realize that you have added an ele edible element except yourself. Hmm. I'm glad he hit on that because when these came out, um, we I, I lived in California and we tell people, you know, you can plant them in your landscape, plant them in a container, but it got to the point where people were planting them as hedges. People would plant a whole line of these things, fruit them, do whatever, and they they would place boxwoods, hollies, they would place any of that and you're just covered. The, every, if you guys don't notice, every single one of these is blueberries. These are blueberries all up here, blueberries all over there. Yeah, there's no waiting until next year you get blueberries this year. <laughs> nice. um, this is the Bountiful Blue. This is our brand new one. The foliage on it, foliage on it has a little bit of a bluish hint. Now, the nice cool thing about a blueberry is in the fall, you're going to get this. See that kind of red color there? They're just going to be with the red leaf color all over it. Um, and then, how tall? What's that? How tall will that one get? Three, four feet. How yeah. High? And that's the good part about those that unlike many of the other blueberry uh, varieties, uh, they get much larger. Uh, that is, they just have a, a, what I would describe as a semi-dwarf growth habit. Um, one of the things I like about Monrovia blueberries is it is a shrub. It's a bush. Um, a lot of other people have, you know, a little bit different. They, they grow them a different way. I just like the way that Monrovia grows them, and you're just covered in blueberries right now. There's what we'll blue. Um, full sun. Full sun. Full sun. Easy. Uh, add a little bit of acid if you can to the soil. They like an acidic soil. Other than that, bam, uh, a little bit different. So this is our favorite one. If you have the space, um, I, we try to say get, get to sunshine blue blueberry. That's the one that pairs up a little bit best and makes it a little bit better fruit. Um, for a little bit of better flavor. So this one along with these Etos that uh, we grew a lot of and people are very, very happy we did. <clears throat> Alrighty. Uh, I think we we grow mints, herbs, uh, stuff, rosemaries, uh, about anything in the garden center other than vegetables these days we will be growing. We do grow artichokes though, um, also strawberries even. Um, that's the, uh, there's where it talks about will fruit alone, um, but we recommend getting a sunshine blue if you can. Uh, flower carpet ambers. Uh, are you guys familiar with flower carpets? Um, Fla snow, is that the same thing as drift? Drift is a similar in the kind of the growth habit. Flower carpet is um, one that's uh, Anthony Tesler is a plant developer and he created flower carpets. He did like Tropicana um, cannas, those really cool canna lilies. Um, these uh, roses are another thing he did. He came and did a talk when I was in California. I didn't have an amber, so I had to get you a scarlet or a red. Um, this is a scarlet flower carpet. These guys are about as bulletproof as you can imagine. You could run these things over with a lawnmower and they'll just start leafing out from the base again. When he when he was doing his little talk with us, he's this Australian guy, he's hilarious. He took pruning shears. He's like, I'm going to show you how you can prune a flower carpet. He took it and chopped the thing all the way to the base. And this will just re-leaf out and grow. Um, when we prune these at the nursery, we will prune them all the way down and they will leaf out. That's how we stage them. Um, we have these in every single color you can imagine. We have them in red, white, pink, amber, which is that color, which is awesome. Um, we have a yellow. Um, also, yellow gets a little bit taller. The, the colors I prefer to sell into this area that grow the best are pink supreme, um, scarlet, and amber. So probably the best performing in this area. All the other ones are tested um, and do well. They're disease resistant. They flower. They will flower. They will flower. That's a photo of one plant up there. I mean, they are caked with flowers. Uh, a juniper, everyone's favorite, but I want to show you guys. This is called a Dobbs Frosted. People have had a lot of interest in it. It's a green juniper, but it gets yellow tips. Stays low, um, like you're even saying, in one of those scenarios. We do do other ones that are full yellow. This one I just like because the tips of them are this bright yellow. So you get two-tone on a juniper. Only get, I think, about a foot and a half um, tall. So that one will stay nice and low. A lot more minutes here. Um, Penicetum Fireworks, it's not a Monrovia exclusive, but it's definitely one you guys may have interest in your containers. 
a pink um, fountain grass. Very, very unique. It's, it's, it's not going to be hardy here, but something to drop into your containers, um, something to drop in your gardens, as long as you know it's an annual. It would, it's a pretty cool grass. Um, does that plume as well as the uh, regular purple fountain? It does have plumes on it. I don't know if it plumes as much as the purple fountain grass. It has but incredible it foliage, sure. though. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, the, the hot pink is more so probably why people grab it. And that color will come out much more vivid as the weather gets hotter because it too is a, it's a hot weather loving plant. As with the, the sedums and stuff like that, like he's saying, they do just pop out. Hesperalis, are you guys familiar with Hesperalis, the red yuccas? Mm -hmm. This guy is one of my, I've you probably said favorite plant on half of these plants, but okay. I'm going to try not to stab you. He's fairly soft. Uh -huh. This is a red yucca. This guy has a flower on here. It comes out and it just flowers. It will hold its flowers for weeks, it seems. But that's not going to be the only flower. It will just shoot out spikes all spring and summer long. They're, they're hardy here. Um, there's certain camp college campuses, like he was saying, that have masses. There's one in Texas that um, a buddy of mine went to, and he said just caked with just red, hot red flowers popping up. Um, we sell these in one gallons and five gallons. We also sell a yellow one. So the flower is yellow. Um, it's called what now? Hesperalo or a red yucca. Red yucca is going to be a common name. It, I think if you say that, you should be fine. Let's see if I know the answer still. We'll try to help you out. Um, when it comes to conifers, I have a few. I'm a weeping conifer guy. This is a Cedars Deodora feeling blue. Whoever can answer what this plant is gets a Monrovia book and a new plants book, which is showing all the new and unique plants that Monrovia did this year. You'll have to know the cultivar name. Just the, just the. <laughs> it, it it will, uh, we'll do common name if you guys know that. Are you guys familiar with Laura Petalum or a fringe flower? <laughs> That's what I told her. I said take it. Come on, it's just me. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's. You guys may have seen other ones. We have, there's a green one with white flowers. There's a red one um, with pink flowers called sizzling pink. There's a green and red one called Razzleberry. This is called an ever red because of the leaves and the flowers. It has dark, 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 dark leaves. And the flower color is so much darker, so much pinker, red. I don't even, ladies can help me with this color. What is that? No, not quite fuchsia. It's beyond fuchsia. Cranberry. 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 Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, I'm not one with colors, as you guys could imagine. Um, this is just a very unique color. Uh, it's about the same size as everything else, three or four feet tall. Um, great shrub plant. If you can plant these with a couple around them, it's just going to impact it even more. If you guys go out and look to the dead center of the nursery, they have the laurel petalum section. I mean, it just pops. It's just so much different. Gardens, a lot of times, you got your greens, you got your greens, you got your greens. What's your other colors? What's something else that's going to grab your eyes? There's some other things that are different colors, but Laura Petums are going to get you your purples. I'll ask two questions. Does anyone have any clue what the name of that stuff is in the soil that roots out? Come. It does what? Mycorrhiza was the stuff in the soil. I was just asked a question to give out this book. Um, and if anyone can tell me, because that's the only thing I can really remember, the better pollinator, or if you're going to buy another Sunrise. Rubric, Sunrise? Sunrise, and then what type of fruit is it to put it together? Thank you. Or sunshine glue. Uh oh. Oh, close, close. <laughs> okay, close when, I, when I said it, I thought, okay. I said it right. <laughs> um, thank you guys for giving up a little of your time on Saturday. It's beautiful. Yeah, and, um, go out and look around the garden. Say, thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Nice. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Cheat and use the Monrovia website. Oh, I was trying. I was trying to get this one. <laughs> I yeah. think they, have, they may have some links up there. I really enjoy your emails. Oh, you so They're much. entertaining yeah. and informative. Well, thank you so yeah, I look much. forward to it every week. Great. Uh, that keeps me inspired.